Hey guys, I'm Medicine Mary and welcome back to my channel. This is a brand new weekly reading vlog. So it is week three of the Book Junkie Trials. This week I'm actually in the middle of deciding if I'm going to be starting Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan or the rest of the story by Sarah Dessen. So we'll see how it goes. This Thursday I'm going to an Epic Reads Day event which is at the Epic Reads HQ which I'm super excited about. I'm just playing with my little bib girl right now. Mm, I missed her last week. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little update. Right now I have a bunch of homework to get done, so I'm gonna do that. And that's it for now. Bye guys. And now after him, there's just after. So I <laughs> I I watched after. Um and I did not think I was going to say this because I honestly expected the movie to be better than the book. I read the book back in December, specifically in lead up to the movie, and I watched the movie. I will say that Hero, who is the one who plays Harden, oh my god, that boy is attractive. The thing is, is they, it, it was a 600 page book, okay, turned into a like a one hour and 30-ish minute movie, almost like two hours and it doesn't work and this is gonna sound so stupid but I feel like you lost so much of the character development in the movie you don't really care about Harden and Tessa's relationship at all in the movie it seems so superficial and it seems so quick and so stupid in the movie the movie makes it seem really stupid like you look at Tessa and you're like girl why are you falling in love with this dude out of nowhere and like you suddenly move in with him out of nowhere like they move in together in the books but it takes like 400 and something pages for them to move in together in the movie it takes like 40 minutes and you're just like uh, hmm, i don't know about that i do i love the casting and i love that they turned tristan into a girl so that molly and tristan were you know lesbians instead of a dude and a chick relationship like, i do like that but, um, I, yeah, the casting was perfect. It was fine. I'm still gonna watch the next one, because I will. But it, it, I, I preferred the book to the movie, and I was not expecting that. What? You just lost so much of the character development. <laughs> ah! Okay. Uh, I was in the middle of editing my vlog that's going up tomorrow. I'm gonna have to get to editing it at some point. But I actually really want to play Tomb Raider because I haven't played it in like a week and a bit since I've been away and I can't play on my PlayStation my parents here because we just have one TV and so no one wants to sit around and watch me play Tomb Raider because no one loves me. Yeah, but that's all for this update and I'll catch you guys up later. Bye! Three twenty-two p.m. Just jumping into bed because I feel like reading. Last night I decided to start the rest of the story by Sarah Dessen. Does this ever happen to you guys? Like on your like cover? See like my fingerprints and stuff. Oh, it's so annoying. I am twenty-two percent through it according to Goodreads. It's actually really cute so far. I already have one quote tapped, and it says. No matter where you are, home or the strangest of places, everyone wants to look like they know where they're going. But it's about a girl, Emma Sailor, and her mother died five years ago from an opioid overdose. Her parents were already divorced and her dad just got remarried. And after some unforeseen circumstances, she has to now spend the next three weeks with her mum's side of the family at the lake. And it's about her kind of going back to her mum's side of the family after really never having any connection to them and getting to know them. And yeah, it's been really cute so far. I really like it and 
I am excited to see where it's going to go. So that is my update for now. Hi guys, so it is Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday. I finished reading the rest of the story last night by Sarah Dessen. It was so nostalgic and I absolutely adored it. But today I'm actually going out with my mom. We're hanging out and we're gonna go to this really cool vegan-ish place for like a late lunch, early dinner. And yeah, I'll bring you guys along with me. Catch you guys. p.m. right now. But like I said earlier, I finished the rest of the story by Sarah Dessen last night and I actually really, really liked it. I'm a huge fan of Sarah Dessen's. I've loved her for years, ever since I was oh God, in like the sixth grade. And so going back to her books, she just has such a beautiful way of writing and you can't help but just like, I don't know, you can't help but just love her story. You can't help but love the characters that she creates. She does such an amazing job at showing familial relationships. And what I really loved about this one was you had Sailor. And growing up, she never actually had a chance to meet any of her mom's side of the family. And so now she's finally reconnecting with them. She's finally seeing them and getting to know them and getting to know this whole extended family that she never had any idea about. And it was just such a fun, beautiful thing. I also love that it was based on the lake. And I think that it really shows, you know, the stress of growing up with a mother who had these addictions and then kind of learning how to grow up herself. You know, Emma doesn't drink at all and she's, you know, having to tell people that she doesn't and, you know, dealing with the pressures of people asking her to. And I just really loved it and I think that it was just a very beautiful story. It was beautiful and sad at the same time. And I tabbed it actually a lot more than I thought I would. And there were three instances in the book that I found that relate to other books in her series. So there's talk about Spinnerbait, which is from this lullaby, and then there's also talk of Colby, which is from uh, Lock and Key. And I love seeing how she puts in things from her other stories in here. And I think the romance in this was very nicely done. It was very subtle and it took a back seat to the main familial storyline, which I thought was just so beautiful. I am not sure exactly what I'm going to read now. I'm between Wicked Saints and A Crown of Coral and Pearl. So I'm going to decide. But yes, that is it for now. Um, tomorrow is the Epic Reads Day. And yes. So it is 10.02 a.m. Thursday, July 18th. Did not get up to you guys this morning because I was running late. Melissa was running late. <laughs> But I'm here. <laughs> I have like a cute little pink skirt on. I'm like digging this outfit. And it's Epic Reads Day. And we have a whole like goodie bag here full of all this like amazing stuff, including the collector's edition of Red Queen, which I'm excited about because I haven't even read Red Queen yet. I really wanted to because Katie loves it. So I'm psyched. Got a coffee so I can survive the day. And I'll catch you guys up as it goes. Bye. To my left is Elizabeth Acevedo. All right, we have Tahara Mafi. First, let's get into kind of like the intro, like how you guys got into publishing and writing. So I've been writing for as long as I can remember, even before I, I knew how to write. I was making up songs and I really wanted to be a rapper. I love when folks chuckle because I'm like, no, I was very serious. I was gonna ask, <laughs> I'm going to be a rap star. And I, I would go to open mics and I would perform my songs. And from there discovered poetry slams and discovered other youth poets and discovered what it meant to perform, what it meant to be on stage, what it meant to compete. And so when I went to college, I got a major that I made up. Um, it was a special interdisciplinary major in performing arts, where basically I learned how to put on a one woman show through poetry. And I studied English, but I also studied theater and was really trying to craft like, how do I embody the language and the stories I'm trying to tell through physicality? 
And after college, I had no idea what to do with that degree. <laughs> and I applied for Teach for America. I was an eighth grade English teacher in Prince George's County, Maryland. I taught at a school that was 80% Latinx, close to 20% black. They had never had a Latina teacher teaching a core subject. They had never had an Afro-Latina teacher teaching period. And I had no idea what the heck I was doing. <laughs> and here I was working with students who were at sixth grade reading levels on average, trying to prepare them for high school. And I really struggled, and it was one of the most difficult things I ever had to do, but I've always had a love for books. And so the one thing I kept trying to turn to is if I could just get the right book into the right kid's hands, like everything else will figure itself out, right? This was super optimistic first year teaching this. <laughs> um, and, and I started just getting this moment of, why can't I be the one writing these books? Like my students keep coming to me asking for very specific kinds of stories that a lot of those don't exist on shelves. Stories about Afro-Latinidad, about Latinidad, about the neighborhoods they were from. And there are such a, there's such a limited range of, of what existed at the time. And I was a writer, and I think it was just that moment of why not me? I always felt like the books were for someone else to do. I don't have the grammar. I don't know the syntactical ways of doing this. I'm afraid of sentences. Like that's a thing someone else does. But it was when I was teaching that it really began kind of penetrating, like, I can do this. I'm a writer. I'm a writer. And so I began writing my first novel, which was a fantasy novel. It wasn't actually The Poet X, um, my second year teaching eighth grade. And then I went and got my MFA in poetry, and from there began querying these novels I had been writing on the low. Because the poetry MFA was very highfalutin, like, this is what real art is but it wasn't a space for young adult literature. And so I wrote that kind of secretly um, and found this agent on Twitter that I really liked and was like, that's my dream agent. Like, I'm going to go after her and send her this fantasy novel. And she was like, this is awful. Don't do this again. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's try something else, a different path. And so the Poet X came from, from there. Like, I'm good at verse, I'm good at poetry. Let me tell a story that's a little closer to home and see what happens. Um, that's the long version. <laughs> That's such a beautiful story. I actually, I, I love, I love that story for so many reasons, but also because I feel like I, whenever I'm asked this question on a panel with other authors, the everybody's always like, oh well, I've been writing books like my whole life since I was a kid, and that's never been my answer. Yeah. So I really appreciated hearing that. That was such a beautiful uh, journey. Um, I also never. I, I didn't start writing uh, fiction until after I graduated from college. So I never, I never even thought about being a writer. I don't know why. I, I meet all these people all the time who are like, I've always wanted to be a writer. I've dreamt about being a writer my whole life. But in my world, it was just never done. I didn't know anyone who was ever pursuing a career to become an author. Um, I'm Iranian and like in the Middle Eastern community and in many other communities. Like you're like your parents expect you to be like a doctor, a lawyer, or like an engineer of some kind. Like becoming an author or an artist of some kind is not even really on the table. And even though I was extremely passionate about reading my whole life, um, I just never thought that like that was something that I could do. It's great. <laughs> I won a raffle. <laughs> Start loving me. I won a raffle. I never win anything. And I won a raffle. And there's a bracelet in here that I'm trying to open with one hand. Melissa, help me. <laughs> oh my god. What's up? Yeah. I was just saying how I won the raffle and I got a bow race. I never win anything. It's like, I feel so special now. Although I low key really want the Lift Joy Crate, but it's okay. Oh my gosh, I know, right? I love that book box says. But someone's going. Saying bye. I have to leave early today. I'm very sad about that. We're saying the whole day tomorrow? Yeah. That'll be good at least. Got all the book signing. Yeah. No, where have you got the special edition? Oh my gosh, isn't it gorgeous? It looks like it's saving so much money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pay to That's read it. That's always the perk. <laughs> <laughs> You're still getting the good deal. Exactly. Um, I don't know if they really need introductions, but we have Victoria Aveyard, the author of the Red Queen series. <laughs> and then Shelby Mahur, an author of the upcoming Serpent and Dove. So if you guys are unfamiliar with either, um, Red Queen, I like to kind of think of as X-Men meets Game of Thrones, uh, dystopian fantasy, very intense, a lot of betrayal. 
Um, and Serpent and Dove is a French-inspired fantasy with witches and witch hunters, and one particular witch and witch hunter in particular who have to get married. And a lot of chaos ensues. <laughs> yeah. um, that sentence had me like, yes. <laughs> The, as soon as you got to, and then they have to get married. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Tell me more. And fantasy is kind of its own beast because it requires both introducing characters and building a world at the same time and getting readers invested in both. So when you started writing, did you start with one or the other? That's a really good question. So um, for Red Queen specifically, that all came out of an image. I'm a really visual writer. So I had this idea of a girl in an arena who was about to be executed, and I didn't know what she had done or why she was there, but instead of being killed, she electrocutes her executioner and kills him instead. And I was like, woo, <laughs> what is this? Who is this person? And it was a lot of asking myself questions, and one of the first was, what did she do? Who is she? And what kind of world needs to exist for this particular scenario to exist? So I knew superpowers were involved. I knew there was some sort of superhuman ability that she had. Did other people have it? Why is she being persecuted in this way? And every question led to another question and another layer of the world. I also knew coming in I wanted to do a dystopian event, but not get it too far out front. So it was fun later on to layer in like, this is actually so many thousands of years in the future. Oh, there's a reason this map looks really familiar. <laughs> I had, I had some fun moments where people were like, these look like the Great Lakes. And I'm like, gee, <laughs> why could that be? Uh, but yeah, so it was a lot of questions, layers, and each single door opened onto another door. And then suddenly I had a world, and then I knew I was telling the story of this teenage girl who was trying to survive. I was actually the opposite oh. with Serpent and Dove. Yeah, the world came before the characters, mm -hmm. which reading the book you might not no. suspect because the characters are pretty strong, willed, and, you know, colorful. Um, <laughs> so I was inspired by the folklore, um, French folklore of the Les Dames Blanches. And it was, you know, it's French folklore, and I kind of wanted the consistency of my world to also be French-inspired, just so it was cohesive, um, and everything stemmed from that. My characters came afterwards. Um, I knew that I wanted it to be a witch and witch hunter because I am obsessed with the enemies to lovers, trope yeah uh, yeah I, I, I created a whole story from it um, <laughs> um and the idea for lou came um you know in a lot of ya books it's the best friend who's kind of um you know the sassier one and and i wanted to explore what the main character like what the best friend's personality would look like and that's where that lou developed from that hi guys so it's 6 p.m now i'm finally back from the Epic Reads event. I actually got back at like five o'clock. But I want to show you guys all the free books I got today. I actually also got a copy of Serpent and Dove by Shelby Moore and it comes out in I think September. But I gave it to my friend Melissa to give to Katie from Katie's Book Knock since I already had a copy that I got from BEA. But the other books I got today, I got the collector's edition of Red Queen, signed by Victoria Aveyard. I also got to meet Justin A. Reynolds, whose debut book is The Opposite of Always. This is Groundhog Day-ish, with the girl always dying at the end of four months, and I'm really excited. I did not know this was what it was about, and Jay, the awkward bookworm, is currently reading this, and she loves it, so he signed this. I'm actually really excited that I got a copy. I also got <laughs> another copy of Shadow Me by Tahara Murphy who also was lovely, and she signed it. With the Fire and High by Elizabeth Acevedo, which, oh my god, I've never heard someone with like a more just beautiful voice. Like, just the way that like her voice is just beautiful to listen to. Like, she should audiobook narrate everything because her voice is just like angelic. And she's also just lovely. So I have it signed too. I also got a copy of Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson. I'm considering keeping this or I might find a POC reviewer to give this to just because it's not totally up my alley with what the book is about. It has to do with these three teens and after their friend dies they keep their friends like songs alive by, by publishing it under a different name. But yeah, I got those books plus uh, the other one that I just mentioned to you guys. Last night I picked up A Crown of Coral and Pearl. 
I'm around 127 pages through it and it's actually really good. I'm loving it a lot so far. I'm like 20% according to Goodreads and I'm excited to see where it's going to go from here. It's about these two twin sisters, Zadie and Noor, and their island is known for having oysters that, you know, have these beautiful pink pearls in them and they're like this rich commodity and they trade with the, like the mainland. But over time, their oysters have kind of run out. They kind of have over oysted the water. <laughs> That's not the right word. And so they're really running low on resources in the past couple of years. And what happens is a tradition is that from this island, whenever the crown prince comes of age, the most beautiful girl from the island is automatically engaged to him and chosen by the elders. So this island really reveres beauty, especially in the young women and you know, they're told to, you know, always stay out of the sun or if you go in the sun, we wear like a massive brimmed hat and they make sure they don't get any scratches or any blemishes on them because anything that's like an imperfection, like pretty much rules them out. And there's a lot of talk about beauty and the value of beauty in the society. You know, Zadie and Noor's mother is honestly an awful human being. And Noor, when she was younger, got scratched and she has like a small scar on her cheek and her mother calls her a disgrace because of that. I'm really excited to see how the rest of this book is going to go. I think I'm really going to love it. But yes, that's all I want to say for now, and I'll catch up with you guys later. Bye. I just woke up, and it is 12.30 p.m. What on earth? <laughs> uh. Hey, guys. So I'm just cutting a zucchini for dinner, but figured that since I was doing this, that I might just as well... Talk to you guys about the book. I'm uh, 244 pages in at the moment and I'm really liking it. So it erases it on the blur, but the castle in um, Illyria, it is a castle like in a mountain. So there are no windows or anything. Like it's all barren and it's really cold. Like only a couple of rooms have fires in it. And it just sounds so depressing. And what's going on is people who live here are very sick and they die at a much younger age and you know a lot of the times they say it's there's like a myth going on that it's like has to do with the mountain the mountains making people sick and the crown prince that uh nor is supposed to marry he has been like kind of stocking up on pearls because he thinks that they will help cure like the illness that he's had since he was a little boy. Oh my god, like, it's not that the, okay, the crown prince, like, isn't a great person. Like, he's kind of weird in the sense of, like, Cardin is weird from the cruel prince, but he's not charming at all. And he's just, like, this strange child. Like, he gets off on doing weird things. Like, he made a pie filled with bats to try and impress Noor. And I sat there and I was like, bruh. And Noor sat there and she was like, bruh. <laughs> Although of course at first she was like, um, is this a normal thing that your people do? Because it's kind of weird. And then Prince Talon, who is the half prince, half brother, he was like, oh uh, yeah, we're strange compared to you guys, but uh, we're not that strange. And I was like, huh? I really love Talon, he's awesome. He's half Iranian because his mother is the last queen that came from Varenia. So I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, what happens is every time a prince needs a queen to become a king, they get their princess from Varenia, which is the island that Nora's from because they're said to be rivaled for their beauty and stuff. But it's pretty much because you know they're normal people who live out in the sun compared to Illyria where they live in a goddamn mountain which would depress me. Like, I could never do that. Are you kidding me? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. But, like, I can already tell. I have a feeling that this book... Like, I'm making prediction here. I won't say if I'm right or wrong at the end. But I have a feeling that the book's gonna end with, like, the... Like, Prince Talon finding out that Noor is actually Noor, that she's not actually... That she's not Zadie because she's currently pretending to be Zadie. So, that's what my prediction is. And I think that I'll be right. Oh, I have a feeling I'm going to be so unsatisfied with how this ends. Like, I'm just going to really want the next book. I just have that feeling already. I think that it's just a really awesome world that was created. And it's definitely a book that is, like, my type of book. Like, something that I really love. 
So if you ever think that like we have very similar tastes, I think that you're really gonna enjoy this book. It comes out on August 22nd. It comes out on August 27th, just to remind you guys when it comes out. But yes, that is it for now. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm really enjoying A Crown of Coral and Pearl. Right now it's like a four out of five stars. We'll see if it goes up any higher. It definitely has the potential to. Um, and I'm really intrigued because I do think there's more to it than how the last queen died, than they're letting on. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Bye. Hi. So it's like two in the morning. <laughs> there is a 90% chance I spent the last mm, five, almost six hours watching a new Taiwanese drama. Yeah, so, uh, didn't read anything. <laughs> this always happens. <laughs> so hopefully I'll finish Crown and Crawl and Pell tomorrow. Okay, that's my update. <laughs> Bye. Hi, so it's 1.50 p.m. on Saturday, the 20th of July. I'm popping on. I am so close to finishing Crown of Coral and Pearl. I have 49 pages left. I've been reading it all morning. And oh my god, I've been like squealing and just like smiling and giggling with this as well. Like, ah, oh, this is such a book for me. And I am getting the same kind of feelings I have with this as I did with Onyx and Ivory. It is just so intricate and so beautiful and the fantasy aspect of it is low-ish. Um, like it's not very magic heavy, but I love the storyline. I love the plot. I love the idea of all these different countries and the wars going on between them and the court politics and just Noor in general is just such an amazing character and she's so, ugh, she's not stubborn. Well, she's kind of stubborn. But she's just, there are times where she's just so brutally honest. All the things that she's thinking are just hilarious. Like there's this one point where she's like, right now I just wish I could just nudge him a bit and see him fall off the cliff. And I was like, yes. Just the way that Mara Rutherford writes, like Nor when she's riding on the horse and how she's describing it as like feeling as though she's riding on the water and how her and the horse are one and the same. They're both so close to freedom and this feeling, but they're both tied down. And it was, oh my God, it's just such beautiful writing. I'm loving it. And things are happening, things are happening, revelations are occurring, and I am loving it. But that's all for now. I'll catch you guys up later after I go pick up some fresh up red in this. Oh my god, how hot is it even at the moment, guys? 35 degrees, but feels like 40. You know, you just gotta love that, guys. Just gotta love that. Okay, I'm headed out. Bye. What's up? It's 6.31 p.m. Oh my god, first off, I was like, couple things to say. I definitely called, like I had my suspicions to do with the woman king and I was correct in those suspicions, but I really liked that it was something that the author threw in. I really liked that Ma Rutha did that and she added something else to that reveal that I was not expecting and I really liked and I'm very intrigued to see how it's going to go in the sequel. I just wrote my review for that and then I wrote my review for A Lesson in Thorns and now I'm writing my next six reviews for the other books that I've read in July because I hadn't written any of my reviews and I'm so glad I've finally gotten around to writing them and that A Crown of Coral and Pearl, because I loved it so much, it gave me the motivation to want to write a review. And I love when I read a book that I enjoy so much that I need to review it, that I want to put my words out there for everyone to see. So if you guys don't follow me on Goodreads, it is linked down in my description box. Also, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, Twitter, which you really should because I obsessively post on Twitter all the time and give like rave reviews of books and just random nonsense. You should also check that out because it's quality. The reason why I wanted to come on here is because I'm going to officially tell you guys that I am a book of the month YA affiliate. So I have a link in the description box, but book of the month has been running for a couple years now and they are now doing a specifically YA centered program. So every month for just $9.99, you can get a brand new release for that month. Sometimes you can even get it prior to its release. Sometimes it'll be all different genres. So you can get contemporary, fantasy, 
mild thrillers, normal ebooks, I don't know, there's all the different kinds. But I have my link down below and you can use the code WOE to get your first box for just $10. And I really do love this program. They Their regular adult program is really awesome to get thrillers because adult thrillers are really expensive to buy. And so I really like that you can just pay 10 bucks a month to get a brand new hardcover thriller when they're normally like 17 to $20. So <laughs> just saying. But I do get a small commission for people who use my link. So that's just also out there. But I also have been following Book of the Month for like a solid year now ever since I joined booktube I've been following them and they're a really solid book company and I like how open they are to their subscribers and they don't really have any issues with putting out their boxes and their content so positivity so you guys get a little oh god unboxing from me today I'm excited I love that their YA boxes are pink too because that is such a mood okay I already know what's going to be in here because I've seen other people's like unboxings, but it's fine. Okay, ready? Ta-da! Oh, what's it say? <gasps> Read your heart out. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, I love it. Okay. So we get a cute little book of the month cookie from Mama's Custom Cookies. We get four book emoji pins, which are kind of funny. And then we have the book which comes very nicely packed and this is just them for saying thank you for joining uh, book of the month YA and that I'll get paid for each person who joins via my power program linky thingy Bob and let me show you guys the book that I got and the book that I chose for this month is symptoms of a heartbreak when I'm really excited it's very beautiful uh, one thing I love about book of the month is as you collect each of them all the spines will like line up this cute little book of the month uh, I don't even know what to call that <laughs> whatever mm. so symptoms of a heartbreak is about a 16 year old Sari who just graduated from med school um, and she wants to work with teens who have cancer and she's kind of like labeled as this girl genius but she starts falling for a patient and it says to improve his chances she will risk her career and it could cost her everything so i really like this because i mean i'm pre-med i just am currently applying to med school i'm doing like supplementals and things like that at the moment so this is something that really interests me but i wouldn't normally pick up just because i'm not much of a contemporary reader so I'm really glad that I actually got the chance to read this and it's really cute like even on the back it says Book of the Month for YA 2019. Yeah, super exciting. I need to now take a couple of cute photos for this. Okay, I'll catch you guys up later. Bye! Hi! Um, <laughs> it's like 3.40 a.m. Technically on Monday. Um, did not update you guys at all today, which was Sunday. So I didn't give you guys any Sunday updates. Oh my god. Ugh. I feel like I don't know why I'm so awake. I didn't do any reading today. So instead what I decided to do... Okay. Let me tell you why I didn't get any reading done today. I decided... First off, I did all seven or eight reviews. Like for all the books I've read up until now. For July, I wrote them all in the last two days, which was great. What I mostly did was uh, create a bunch of mood boards <laughs> for different books that I read, which takes surprisingly long time. I would just sit there on Pinterest and create different collages for different books as I watched booktube videos. But I decided to start a scheme from Houdini today, and I am now 300 and... 50 something pages in, I don't have much left to go. It's, it's, it's good. I, I love this series because I, it never fails to make me laugh and smile. I love just the way that Carrie Maniscalco writes her books. Like the witty banter in this is so unrivaled by any other book. Like, I love the witty banter in this, especially since, well, this takes place, when's this one taking place? Um, yeah, this is, takes place in 1889. We follow Audrey Rose, Thomas, and her grandfather. They are currently on a ship on their way to America, and there is this midnight carnival 
on this ship and one of the people who is part of the Midnight Carnival is actually Harry who Dean me are you serious dial move your butt from the camera <laughs> one of the people part of this Midnight Carnival is Harry Houdini as well as Mef Mef I cannot say I've been trying to say this one character's name for the entire book and I cannot say it for the life of me I will put how it's spelt right here but it's like Mephistopheles I don't know it sounds honestly like some sort of an STD I'm just saying and people have been dying on this ship and the way that their bodies are left kind of resemble tarot cards and it's just very interesting so far. I honestly have no clue who's killing these people, like at all. And that's a very big theme with all of Carrie Maniscalco's books. I'm just so enamored by the book itself. And as much as I read so many mystery thrillers and a lot of the times I have inklings as to who is who and what's done what, I for some reason never ever figure out who's actually behind these things. It never happens. And I'm getting close to the end and I still cannot tell who it is who's behind these things. And I'm always just like, seriously, when the reveal happens because it's the most obvious person and you just never suspect it. So I'm really excited to see who it's gonna be for this one. But the main reason why the series is just, I guess the witty band of Carrie Manson does such a phenomenal job and Crestworth is one of my ultimate ships. I will admit, I was really hesitant going into this one and I've been putting it off for like almost a year now because I was so afraid to pick it up due to the fact that people were saying that this one has a strange love triangle in it and it doesn't. I can see how people think that there would be, but if you read the book, it doesn't. And I mean, there's slight hints, but it doesn't. And I'm so annoyed that I had listened to other people who were like, oh, I love the first two books, but the third one just doesn't live up to it for me because it's still a good one. Do I think it's the best one in the series? No. Not so far. I haven't finished it, so I can't tell you, but I don't think it's the best one in the series. I love books that are set like back in like Victorian kind of times where it's this witty band between a female and her suitor and they have to be careful and chaste because it's unladylike for her to get caught with him alone because if they're caught alone then it will bring shame to her person and I don't know I love that kind of stuff. But, oh, since it's almost four in the morning I'm gonna finish this little bit tomorrow and then start on my Reading Rush TBR. But I just realized that this I have to I have to end this vlog. I guess you'll have to just watch my reading rush TV. <laughs> I guess you'll have to watch What happens when you sleep until four in the morning? Okay, according to Goodreads, I'm 76%. So I will read the rest of this tomorrow morning and then move on to my Reading Rush TBR. Technically, this does fulfill like a couple of prompts on the Reading Rush. I just don't know if it counts since I technically started it Saturday and Sunday. Okay, I'm stopping this now because I ramble. This has been eight minutes and I'm already gonna have to cut this. Ugh. Okay. Bye. Hey guys, so I'm just gonna close out the vlog here. It's 12.40 on Monday and I've just been doing like other stuff this morning. I, I haven't had a chance to finish escaping from Houdini yet. I only have 25% but it's fine. <laughs> I'll get to it eventually. So what I read this week, I technically, yeah, I only read two books this week, which is fine. Like that's still good. I read The Rest of the Story by Sarah Dessen, which was a very lovely, like, nostalgic read. It was nice. And then I read A Crown of Coral and Pearl, which was just fabulous. So when you read a good book, 
it's pretty much a good week. I do want to let you guys know that there is a pre-order incentive with Crown of Coral and Pearl. If you guys submit your pre-order incentive before August 27th, which is when it is released, you guys can get two character art prints as of Nora and Zadie, and also a signed book plate, which is awesome. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You guys can do it too. And yeah, those are two books I read this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of me, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch, guys. Bye.